Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator, and uh, you'll notice that I'm on my mobile phone again, but I'm not holding it anymore, so um, I made the very wise decision to spend £14 on Amazon and uh, buy one of those tripod things. Um, I can stick it in my bag, I can take, leave it in my car, uh, <laughs> hopefully I won't have it stolen again. Uh, but, uh, you know, basically um, I've realised now that I can do little quick snippet videos uh, between the main videos which I'll still use on my uh, proper camera equipment and actually while I talk about that it's woo -hoo, it's all back so I'm ready to start rolling again but as you guys know I'm in the process of moving house so the swords the swords have gone they're all they're all locked away in storage now um, and uh, yeah we, it's it's um, not long until we move so um, I don't have many things here to show you but while I was clearing things out um, getting ready for the move, I started finding things in the depths of my storage uh, that I'd forgotten I had. Um, and one of those things was this. Now, what do you think this might be? Uh, half of a uh, Boudicca or Boudicca? Uh, no. Um, although obviously that looks very becoming. A uh, little hat? Maybe no. So it's a shield boss. I'm sure most of you will have realised that. Um, but really one thing I thought I'd mention, so obviously I meant to fix this to a shield board. I put it somewhere, forgot I had it. In fact, I found a couple of shield bosses, both quite nice ones. The other one is more of a, um, just a kind of typical nipple shaped one. Uh, whereas this has the projecting, I don't know what you want to call that, nubbin, uh, just kind of terminal thing, mushroom. Uh, I don't know what you want to call that and I don't even know if they have a proper name. Uh, but when I was studying uh, migration era, um, archaeology and in fact I, I worked on a Merovingian site in Normandy and various Anglo-Saxon sites in England as an archaeology student uh, and briefly as an archaeologist after I finished university. Um, these are the types of um, shield bosses that you find certainly in England uh, and northern France um, in the kind of 5th, 6th um, century period and uh, they're very, very interesting because they vary slightly. This is, uh, this, I'm just using this example to, to make the point. But they have this projecting stalk that's attached in various ways. They seem, generally speaking, be forged, weld, I think, forged welded into the um, raised boss, as it were. And then they have various types of sort of um, kind of table-like um, flat bit. I don't really know what to call it. On button, I guess, I guess is probably the best word. On the front and you'll notice if you've looked at the uh, Sutton Hoo shield you'll notice it has something like that and I have spoken about the Sutton Hoo shield with Paul Mortimer on video if you just search Anglo-Saxon or Sutton Hoo uh, in my videos you'll find those videos they're well worth watching if you haven't watched them incidentally full of a lot of information mostly from Paul incidentally not from me um, and it's very interesting because there's some debate about what these are about now this is obviously made for reenactment um, or HEMA for whatever, um, for use, for modern use. And this is more robust than most of the archaeological examples, not maybe all of them, but most of the archaeological examples. And most of the originals are quite a thin stalk, quite a dainty button on the top. And they're not, the bosses are, tend to be thinner than modern reenactment ones as well. So the, the, most people, I think, would say that this is, it has been surmised these are for like catching blades. I think it's more likely, given the context of the period, um, that it's more likely for controlling spears and other people's shields. Um, so, you know, it's very interesting. Why did these come along at this particular time? Why did these stalks and these buttons evolve in this kind of mi migration era um, environment? Why didn't that exist much, much earlier? Uh, and equally, why didn't it, it exist later? Why didn't they keep these? on Anglo-Saxon and Frankish and Longobard and um, other, you know, Viking era shields into the, you know, maybe kind of 8th, 9th, 10th centuries or even into the Norman or the later medieval period. We do find something a little bit similar or reminiscent of this on some medieval bucklers and targes and smaller shields. And one thing that's notable, of course, is it is not a spike. They always have a flat button or in this case rounded button on the end. So whilst you could strike someone with this, I don't think their primary purpose is that because they're not pointed uh, in any way. And if you wanted to wound people with this, we'd have like a dirk, like the dirks, which have a spike in the middle. So they're not spikes. They are, for some reason, they're, they're either for controlling or manipulating the opponent's shield, maybe the edge of their shield, maybe the boss of their shield, maybe hooking it open, maybe in the shield wall, um, or they're for um, trapping spears somehow. So... 
ideas below. I'd be very interested to hear, particularly if you do reenactment or if you've studied this period and if you have thought about these same questions, what do you think these stalks and buttons are for? Do you know any further evidence of what these might be for, uh, like in art of the period, for example? Do you ever see them being used? I don't think so. I've looked for that. Um, and do you have some ideas? And, and why did they appear and why did they disappear? That's the other question. Even if we know what they're for, why wasn't that useful in the 9th century? Why wasn't that useful in the Viking era? Why was that only useful in the migration era? Why did they get phased out? Anyway, a very interesting thing, all thanks to me having a good old clean up and tidy out uh, in preparation for moving house. Um, but, you know, the, these, uh, uh, these last few days are going to be last, some of the last few days that you see me filming in this, uh, in my study, in this room. And as you can see, all the swords are gone. So uh, new times and uh, new places I'm going to be filming. Um, and uh, obviously on the mobile phone, I might be filming out and about um, more often now. Anyway, cheers for watching and I will see you guys soon.